G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. Uh, that's right, we're finally getting back into making some terrain again. Uh, specifically this week we're going to be looking at making these uh, desert buildings or ruins. Uh, this is a pretty simple project, uh, just using some offcuts and bits of scrap foam I had laying around. A uh, really simple build to do, doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, so let's not waste any more of yours and get stuck straight into it. Alright guys, so these are the uh, foam board offcuts that I'm using here. Uh, now this foam I bought a long time ago, uh, it didn't have the paper on uh, this one, so I didn't have to remove it. Uh, since have not been able to find these boards of foam anywhere, uh, and now I generally use the uh, paper backed stuff and remove the paper from it. To cut the edges of these walls, I'm going to be using the 45 degree cutting tool that I made a while back. I'll put a link to the video which shows that off a little bit more just above for you. Now this just means that I can join all these walls together and sort of hide the joins for them a little a little more. Now for the doors and walls here, um, just whatever looks about the right size, I generally go about three or three and a half centimeters by about an inch wide uh, for the doorways. The walls here are about eight or eight and a half centimeters tall. It seems to look about right for um, you know one floor of 28 millimeter, so I've gone with that. As far as the length of the walls, that's entirely up to you. Uh, I've just made a rectangle building for this one here, nice and simple. When you're cutting out your windows and doors, just make sure that you do try to make these cuts fairly straight so they don't look too off down the track. One other thing I'm going to do is just sort of mark in some scratches and uh, a couple of little timbers above the door here using my mechanical pencil. I find this tool works best. Uh, I'll use it again to mark in the cracks and also put some holes in there, some bullet holes into these uh, dirt walls. It just works really well, doesn't grab the foam and doesn't pull it as you sort of make those uh, indentations on this foam. So once you've got your walls and your windows in, uh, next thing I did was just using a little piece of flat foam. So I'm just using some of these 45 degree offcuts just to put place inside around inside each wall, uh, just for the roof to sit on to make sure that it's even and flat all the way around. Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in really quickly here. I won't take too much time before I jump back to the build. I wanted to give my heartfelt thanks uh, and gratitude to all my Patreon supporters this year. That money from Patreon has actually kept the supplies up and also helped me overcome a major technical issue recently with uh, my microphone, which <laughs> was uh, preventing me from getting recording done. Uh, so I just wanted to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate the support. Uh, if anyone else would like to support the channel to uh, continue and to improve, you can jump down to Patreon. Uh, you can check out my page. I do have some articles go up there occasionally. Uh, I have uh, build previews as well as uh, work in progress shots going up. Everything generally will become public after some time. So there are some things over there now that you can view without becoming a patron member. So uh, please don't feel like it's sort of stuff behind the paywall curtain that uh, you know is too exclusive. But uh, if you would like to support the channel, uh, please jump over there. I try my best to make it valuable for you. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to say thank you to all those people that have helped uh, this channel this year. Uh, and even those that have just watched and subscribed and liked and commented, uh, thank you very much guys. It is the drive I need every day to get up and continue to do this. So uh, anyway, let's get back to the build. All right, so sorry for that interruption. Uh, now we're gonna be also making, instead of just straight up buildings, we're gonna also make some ruins. Uh, now I, find, I found some odd cut uh, off cuts here that I think will be perfect for that. Uh, same process for um, cutting in the windows and everything there. I've just sort of, uh, you know, angle cut these, uh, you know, make sure that the two, the tops of the corners line up and are at the same height uh, and make sure you've got a nice square edge around the bottom of this one. So I've cut them to sort of be rounded around uh, each of the ruined walls there. And one other thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to do this across all the buildings, is just using the edge of my pen here. I'm just going to press in the corners. So I want these to look a little bit worn. So I felt this looked really good. Uh, you could probably use your fingernail. Just any rounded object will be fine to sort of press in the cornered edges. Uh, it gives it a bit more of a worn look. Uh, it's a really simple technique to sort of get that rounded top on this foam board. Now for the bases on these, um, I am going to just be using cereal box cardboard. And for the most part, I'm going to be uh, sort of cutting these in to be kind of close to the wall. So I don't want large bases for this. I don't really need to build these up onto you know foam board or MDF or anything because they are going to be held fairly straight and 
you know, they were not going to warp or anything because it is pretty close to where that foam board is will be glued down. So I've just marked it out quickly with a pencil there and using some hot glue, I've gone around and we're just going to press this straight down. Uh, this will give me just enough room to add the details around each of these walls. And then as I place it onto, you know, the terrain or the battle mat or whatever I'm going to use here, uh, it'll, it should fit in fairly nicely to whatever sort of terrain I want to use. So here I'm sort of cutting in some damage on the building. As you can see, I've marked in some cracks and stuff there as well with the mechanical pencil. With this, I did sort of drive the uh, craft knife in a bit deeper on some of those cracks just to give them uh, you know a, a lot more definition and it seemed to work really well so now with the next building i did a couple of these as well this is just a building that's kind of within a little bit of a compound i guess you could say so we've got a large sort of outer fence uh, and then a building on the inside so there's nothing too different about the build process for this as you can see the the two of the walls there are much longer just to indicate the fence for the uh, compound i did cut those uh fences uh, if you like just a little bit shorter than the actual building itself i only did this on one of them the other one has the same height fence all the way around and it still looks fine so it's just an extra you know variation you can put into the build to make it look a little bit different if you want um, but apart from that, the process for this one was nearly identical. Uh, I didn't glue in those supports for the roof on the inside of the building, so uh, I completely forgot about it on this one. But I did realize that once I sort of cut this, uh, if I could cut it fine enough, uh, I could get a flush fit and it would just press in there and not sort of fall down or be uneven. So it'll sit there on its own, as you can see. And once we add some glue to that, it should, uh, it should hold there and not move around. Now for the stairs here, uh, all I've done is just grab some chipboard, so some one mil cardboard here. Uh, this stuff is fairly rigid, so uh, but it's not too hard to cut with a craft knife. I've just marked an angle there that I'm quite happy for these stairs to sort of be at. Uh, you don't want them to be too steep or too uh, uh, too shallow, I guess, you know, because uh, then it will sort of stretch right across the building or perhaps be too large. I wanted these to be uh, not quite as uh, long as the building is wide. So as you can see, I've just marked in a stair pattern onto this and uh, I've cut it out with a craft knife. Uh, now I'm going to be using a foam cutter here. Uh, you will notice in one of my previous videos, I'll put a link to it. Um, I have used a handheld foam cutter. Um, in much the same way as I'm using this foam cutter here, just kind of as a table setup. So I'll put a link to that video above. You'll see me use a hand cutting uh, hot wire foam cutter to make this uh, same sort of jig. So uh, I want to give a big shout out to Nate from Nate's Miniatures who sent me this uh, cheaper hot wire foam cutter after he upgraded to his uh, Proxon. Uh, now I find this one, uh, whilst it's probably, and I don't have a lot to compare it to, probably not quite as good as the Proxon in a lot of ways. Uh, it'll get the job done and it seems, as you can see, to work okay. It doesn't have temperature adjustments, but it's fine for cutting out those stairs. So all I did was just press down that cardboard uh, template uh, onto the foam and then just ran the wire around the cardboard template. And it's not very neat, but it doesn't need to be for the style of building we're making today. Here I'm just cutting it up to the right size to make sure that the platform at the top of the stairs will uh, line up with the uh, platform on the top of the roof. Uh, what I'm going to do is just cut out a little bit of that, um, that edging around that roof wall just so you've got a, a straight on uh, walkway from the platform of the stairs uh, onto the roof itself. Now you need to be a little bit careful here. This is all hot glued in place except for the uh, actual ceiling part there. So uh, just be a little bit careful as you're um, cutting this out because you don't want to slip and, and accidentally cut yourself. Uh, so make sure you're taking it a little bit careful if you're cutting uh, pre-built foam structures like that. Uh, now to glue those stairs in, I just use PVA glue. Uh, with that um, yellow foam that I've got there, it does not take the hot glue well. So uh, just be careful if you're using that. Uh, XPS foam, some of it is, doesn't enjoy that uh, hot, hot glue at all. So here I'm just putting in some toothpicks that I've sort of sharpened down to points to make them a little bit easier uh, to get into the foam. So um, sorry, I was just using matchsticks here. Uh, I just break them off so they're a little bit shorter and I'm just going to press them in. I noticed these sort of details on some of the desert terrain buildings I looked up. And uh, you can see on this build actually I've put another sort of room on the top here. Uh, this is completely optional. There's no difference in the build process to do that. It's just making another box essentially and gluing it to the top. Now you can see with some of these I've built, um, I've used some really thin offcuts of XPS, uh, sorry, a foam board there to make some small ruins. 
Uh, I've got my uh, rectangular building there. I've damaged up the walls a little bit. And I've also given this a real quick base coat. Now for this, I used a, a kind of a red brown color and it really doesn't matter. You could use black, basically any darker color um, to base coat these things before you put on your little rocks uh, is, a, is pretty important. Um, again, uh, which color in particular doesn't necessarily matter. Um, you could have easily have gone with, you know, your black paint and Mod Podge mix uh, would also work perfectly well here. The reason that I put that base coat down before I glue on these little uh, rocks, which are just chips of foam board, is just so that it's a lot easier to uh, paint without having to try and cover up the white or the yellow or the blue of that foam board and XPS that we're using. So having the base coat behind it, um, because this PVA glue will dry clear, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky trying to paint all those little gaps and stuff between these little rocks and some of that lighter color of the foam can show through. So I generally try to give it a base coat before I go and add these rocks on just so I don't have to worry about that down the track. I am adding some extra details around all these little bases as you can see. Um, uh, so the previous ones were little chips of uh, foam board. In this one, I'm actually using some gravel. So this is just some gravel uh, that I found in the backyard. Uh, try not to use dirt, I guess, because it can get really, really messy. messy. Um, this is just some little rocks uh, that I've sifted and they've come up really nice. So at this point, I have hit a couple of colors on here with the airbrush. Now for this, I chose Army Painters Desert Yellow and Mummy Robes, and I've pretty much covered up that entire base coat that was there. Laid down a sort of a rough cover covering of Desert Yellow, and then followed through with that Mummy Robes. Now this isn't necessarily perfect colors for desert terrain. Um, but I wanted this to be kind of gray and a bit of a wastelandy sort of looking thing, so pretty happy with these colors and I do want this to be a fairly quick paint job so I'm not going to sort of spend too much time painting this up this is meant to be a pretty quick build so for the timbers I use the army painters oak brown and for the final details of the bases here I'm going to be using army painters brown battleground mix here as well as some uh, simple playground sand so uh, this battleground mix is really good I find it's just the right scale so uh, with the sand there to uh, give us the texture of the full base. Uh, mixing in a little bit of this uh, brown battleground from Army Painter gives us a, a really good ground mixture, especially for these desert terrain buildings. And the color is such that I didn't end up painting them either. So I've, once I lay down this, um, this sand and gravel mix, you'll see that it actually looks really, really good in the finished product. So you could obviously go over it with a wash or something, uh, but I found that the color was fine with the sand and the rocks. You can see I've just added in a handful of small, uh, slightly larger uh, bits of gravel there as well, just to give it a little bit more variation. To add all this on, I'm just going to be using some uh, PVA glue and water. This is roughly a half and half mix. Uh, and I'm just applying this down onto that uh, cereal box base here and making sure I don't get it too far up the walls or, or covering up those rocks I've already put down. And I'm just going to make sure I've got a pretty decent sort of pool on this base uh, before I go and lay on the, that sand and gravel mixture. So uh, you can go back over this once it's dry and add more if you need to. Um, but I found that this was uh, pretty good. So originally I started here trying to sort of shake this on but as you can see uh, because the mix wasn't very uh, it wasn't a very big mix and I hadn't mixed it very well I was just getting gravel out so I've just used my fingers here and I'm just going to sprinkle this stuff on uh, it doing it that way gave me a pretty good variation uh, so you can see there in the bottom left there is uh, a pretty good sort of dispersing of sand versus gravel this probably gets old, depending on how many buildings you're doing, uh, this process of picking it up and dropping it on does get old pretty quick. Uh, so you'll see shortly I actually do make up another batch and I start pouring it straight on. Make sure you've got something underneath this as you go around because it will tend to uh, make quite the mess uh, no matter how you're trying to do this. So here you can see I'm just sort of pouring this on now and it's given us really good coverage uh, on all those bases. This little ruin here is all done. I've let that first round of PVA glue dry and now I'm just going back in with a little dropper. Could use a brush for this as well so long as you've let that first coat dry. Uh, and these bases, once they've dried from that last lot of dropper, uh, dropping of PVA glue and water, they come up really good. You can't tell that there was PVA glue put on top, but it, it's a perfect little effect. 
uh, you do want to make sure this sand is not going to come away at any point because otherwise it will be messy pieces of terrain. Now finally I'm adding some grass tufts here and these are the deadland tufts. Uh, these were fantastic for this build. As you can see they fit in perfectly. Uh, these final pictures here show you all these buildings done. One of those buildings looks fairly different. It was just because part of my scrap foam was of a different kind and it had a different texture but it's fine, I'm still using that building anyway. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, these all come up really good. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. It was a really fun one to do. Nice and quick build to get some quick terrain on the table. And I'll be making up a uh, desert themed battle mat and some more desert terrain very shortly. So I hope you stay tuned. I'll have more terrain videos coming out very shortly. I should have another one next week. Uh, lots of plans in the tank for 2021. Uh, thanks very much for all your support guys and I'll see you in the next video.